I was Annie Yashuba Rico from Street Scores. I'm definitely not home. It's a little chilly outside, but the view is way better outside, so I prefer to do it outside. I wish I could see like the complete maybe I'll do like a quick little scope in the background um before I'm done with the video. But we have so many crazy things to talk about right now. Jonathan Allen said on the radio this morning that he's one thousand percent thought about leaving Washington. We're gonna dive deeper into his quote and like get get further into his quote to see like what he also says is the why like you know of course he'll plan on finish first of all we can't the trade deadline's passed we can't trade trade them right now anyway um we're gonna dive into all of that whether we should or should not trade away jonathan allen and while we're at it is it time for us to trade terry McLaurin as well is it time to embrace a full rebuild i'm gonna dive into a lot of stats especially when it comes to terry McLaurin. as to like is it his fault is it eric the enemy's fault is it sam howell's fault we're gonna take a look at all the different angles on what's going on with terry McLaurin this season man like what is it is it lack of targets is it just lack of getting open i mean curtis samuel feels like he's our best receiver right now but is he actually going out there and producing like it um is he the most open all of that type of stuff so we got to talk about everything and then of course when we're talking about a full rebuild we're going to take a look at a lot of these 2024 free agents a lot of the guys this is their final year of their contract so you got like camera curl curtis samuel um antonio gibson a lot of these guys we're going to take a look and see who we should retain um maybe the next regime may not want any of them maybe they'll just come in and just bring a whole bunch of decent solid average some of them pretty good guys on their own they're like we don't we don't have any attachment to these guys also we're going to take a look at the commander's roster and see who is not even a 2024 free agent who's not an unrestricted free agent at the end of this season and maybe we should trade one or more of those guys um, with a couple of years in their contracts because guys with a couple of years in their contracts are definitely more tradable than a guy that has no years because i mean as of the end of this regular season which you know couldn't come soon enough for a lot of us fans but um those 2024 free agents they're not on our roster they're just gone we can't get anything in return for them whereas we have some guys on our roster that if you're trying to trade for some trade some draft picks we have some options there as well but before we dive into all of that, make sure you still follow that like button, still follow the subscription button, still follow the bell next to that subscription button so you get notification each and every time I release an informative and opinionated video just like this one. Make sure you stay tuned with all of the content. Even though I'm not home, um, I'm still getting this content out. A lot of the videos I've been watching the past couple of days have been pre-recorded because I knew I was going to be gone. So I was like, let me make sure I get some stuff out. Um, but I'm going to try to keep you updated on as many things as possible. I'm really busy, but you know, this was one of those ones. I was like, I got to stop doing what I'm doing um and, and make sure i get this video out so um yeah man um stay tuned with all of the content um, i'm working on more mock drafts i'm working on so many different things when i get back home that's probably when i'll do like the gm candidates head coaching candidates defensive coordinator candidates probably even the physical coordinator candidates the way this stuff is looking so man without further ado let's go ahead and get to it let's get it. he's our quarterback for the five ten years and i truly believe that All right, so it's trending right now on Twitter, going crazy. Commander star defensive lineman Jonathan Allen says he's 1,000% thinking about leaving the team. He also hinted at, at being open to a trade. Quote, 1,000%. I'd be lying if I said I didn't. I play this game to win. I would love to win here for sure, but I want to win first and foremost. So basically to him, winning here is the extra. Like being in the DMV is extra. He's from Virginia, born and raised and all of that. But at the end of the day, winning is the most important. Where he does it is secondary. And of course, he would prefer to do it where the team that drafted him, where his brothers are. Well, most of his brothers, some of them are gone now. But um, he prefer to do it here. But if it's not here, he just wants to win. That's the first and foremost thing. Moving on with the quote. So that's always going to be at the front and center of my mind and everything I'm going to be doing in my career is going to make sure I'll have an opportunity to win. So it sounds like this offseason, if we're doing, if we're really embracing a rebuild for the reasons I've already stated, potentially trading away Terry McLaurin, potentially letting a lot of these 2024 free agents walk, potentially trading away even more players whose contracts don't even end at the 2024 season, doing whatever we can to accumulate as much draft capital, offseason capital as possible, gaining cap space. Um, you cut Charles Leno, we're already at almost $100 million worth of cap space, somewhere like $97 million. It could, We could end up potentially cutting or trading away more players. And then we already traded away Montez Sweat chase young for um 
a second, high second, and a very late third round draft pick. So we'll see. Um, the Commanders haven't had a 10-win season since RG3's rookie season in 2012. That's absolutely terrible. We made the playoffs um, with, <laughs> with Taylor Heineke, but we tripped, fell, and barely crawled in with one leg to that one. I still don't take pride in that playoff run at all. Um, but to continue with the quote, he said, quote, If that's what it takes, I'm going to focus on these next four games, do what I can to help this team win, and then we'll evaluate things after the season. So, yeah, I mean, I mean granted, this news coming out right now, is a little bit of drama but at the end of the day everybody knows the season is over so I, i'm not mad at him at all but at the very least he said that it, I, I, I believe he's true to his word i think if anything he's being 100 transparent in everything that he's saying right now i think he's being completely honest he's saying that i will do whatever it takes to try to win as many games as i can before i'm gone but just know Especially if y'all plan on doing this big rebuild, I'm probably gone after this season. I'm not gonna lie to y'all. And at the end of the day, man, I think it's definitely best to trade him to like an AFC contender or just like how Chase Young went to an NFC contender. I mean, you de you definitely don't want to trade them to a team you'll potentially have to play against in the playoffs that, that could prevent you from getting to the Super Bowl in the first place. Um, so I would prefer to send them to an AFC contender, send them out of the, uh, in the division, out of the conference, all of that. But hey, man. Just do what's right by him and send him to a contender, man, because he clearly wants to win. He's been doing everything he can in his power to help this team win. The, you can't say that about the entire team, between Dan Snyder, between the defense as a whole, Jack DeRio, even Eric Yenemy, Sam Howell at times, everybody, the offensive line, Ron Rivera, Martin Mayhew. So I, I'm not mad at him for being like, man, I'm ready to abandon ship. I've held on for so long. I've been trying to keep my composure. You saw, like, little little tidbits little moments here and there where he's starting to lose himself because he's typically been the say all the right things guy but he's been transparent this season he's about done he's had it up to here uh, this year you can see i mean again he went on that rant a couple of weeks ago um yeah he's sick of it dog but at the end of the day stats wise i mean he's just about the same it's not him it's not like he's much of a difference deron Payne after getting his money is a big difference I'm going to discuss that in my stats video um, from everything that happened against the Dolphins. You know, we have some crazy advanced stats to break down for that. So stay tuned for that because I know I always do my position group, my position group breakdown where we break down every position group, every coach and stuff like that. So that's coming later, probably tomorrow. Um, I have some really interesting Deron Payne stats there. But for Deron Payne, uh, for Jonathan Allen, he had 7.5 sacks last year. Um, he's at 5.5 now. He could easily explode for like a two sack game and already tied the sacks he had last year by next week and then maybe even surpass it by the end of the season um but yeah man we may just want to do jonathan allen a favor because you see how happy chase young is and not just happy not just happy to be on a contender but to also be impactful on a, on a contender like that man is actually like going out there balling out on a contending team so it's like the best of both worlds chase young got exactly what he wanted i mean there were also reports that chase young just didn't want to play for his hometown team anyway um, he just wanted to get out of the DMV, you know, experience more of America, I guess, some type of thing. He wanted to play at home, which I'm not mad at. Um, I went to college away from home, so I definitely understand the feeling. Yeah, he went to college away from home as, as well. So he just, I don't know, he, I'm pretty sure he has the DMV in his heart, family, friends, all of that there. But he wanted to, you know, go play somewhere else. So, it, But Jonathan Allen seems like he would have loved to play for the Commanders as long as we were winning. Again, winning is for, um, first and foremost. But yeah, if, if the Commanders were winning and another team were winning, he'd prefer to play for the Commanders. Um, and, that's, and that's great for him, but it, it just seems like, man, we need to do him a favor and let him go. Um, he's not really doing us a favor. We need to do him a favor and let him go. Now, moving on to Terry McLaurin, man. Poor Terry, because there's so many different angles you can look at this. I don't think Terry McLaurin just randomly just got terrible. I think it's mostly on the offense, but we're going to dive into why. It could also be Terry McLaurin's fault in some ways as well. But him having zero catches, zero yards, zero touchdowns, this guy definitely deserves better. He even said after the game, and I'm not used to Terry McLaurin saying funny stuff, especially when it relates to how bad we've been in general, how bad he's been or anybody. Again, him and Jonathan Allen are showing layers to their personality that we've never seen before now that we're like really losing and looking like we're about to be a, a full rebuild. He said, I ran a lot of cardio today. <laughs> He said that's all he did. He was just basically, I mean, whenever I see somebody out there just running around doing nothing, I remember when Westbrook was talking about Pat Bev, and he was like, man, y'all hyping him up, man. All he's doing is running up and down the court doing a whole bunch of nothing. That's how Terry McLaurin basically surmised his own game yesterday. He, he said, I just ran a lot of cardio today. Yeah, that, I mean, that was nice. You know what I'm saying? Just out there not doing nothing. Um, that's cool. 
Um, again, zero anything across the board on the stats. It's crazy because this is the only second time in his career that he's gone without a catch in a game. Out of 76 games, this is only the second time, including yesterday. That's crazy. But Sam Howell doing what Sam Howell does, trying to be a leader, takes a lot of the blame himself. Terry McLaurin had three targets. He just wasn't able to catch any of them. But Sam Howell said, quote, it's definitely not what we want to do coming into the game. I feel like we started to get a lot of our guys involved in the game today, and we just got to do better. You know, Terry McLaurin is the best part of our offense. We got to find ways to get him the football. I've got to find ways to get him the football. Obviously, he had a few targets, but three targets are not enough for your best player. So we just got to find him more ways to get involved. I completely agree. I believe a lot of it is on Eric Bieniemy. Some of it's on Sam Howell as well. But at the end of the day, man, Terry McLaurin just got to be better. But before we even get to that, it's crazy because you would think against the best offense in the NFL, we would throw the ball more than we usually have, or at least the same amount. Eric Bieniemy chose yesterday against the best offense in the NFL to throw the least pass, to call the least passing plays we've called this entire season. I believe yesterday we had the least amount, somewhere in the 20s. We're typically in the 30s, 40s, even 50s some games as far as pass plays called, which is absolutely crazy. That I just don't understand why you go against the most high-powered passing attack you go against all year. And that's the, that's the game that you choose to throw the ball the least. And to your number one receiver, the least that he's been thrown to only twice in his NFL career. That's ridiculous. Um, but right now, a lot of it, again, I blame on Eric Bieniemy as well. Watch this number one receiver is averaging a career low in yards per catch, yards per game. And this is his first year in Eric Bieniemy's offense. Is that a coincidence? I don't know, man. His first year in Eric Bieniemy's offense, he's having his most down year in his career. You kind of want to say that, but at the same time, Terry has gotten now eight plus more targets per game through 12 games, most of his NFL career, while also having his lowest in yards and receptions and yards per target. So right now he's averaging more targets per game in, in, in this season, in Eric Benjamin's offense, than more than any other season, but at the same time, he's catching the ball less. I mean, that could, you can start to shift the blame towards Sam Howell. You can shift it towards Terry McLaurin, all these other receivers that we have, I guess. Our defense is doing the best to clamp them. Um, I don't know. Turf toe injury? What, I mean, what is it? I mean, you got to start to look at Terry. Like, is, is, it, is it your problem separating? Now, granted, Terry is usually going against the best corner of every team. But when does that stop them before? With bad QB play, the best corner of every team covering them, he's still been productive. I don't know why this year he just hasn't been. Because Terry right now not only lead, has the most targets per game in his NFL career, he also has the most targets on this team by far out of the receiving group. By far. Terry McLaurin has 100 targets. Jahan Dotson is second with 74. And Sam Howell is second in the league in passing. So it's not like Sam Howell is not throwing the ball to somebody. He's second in the NFL in passing yards. So and, and Terry McLaurin's leading the team in, in targets by at least 26 to the next guy in second place, which is Jahan Dotson with 74. And it's at the same time, Curtis Samuel is having a very productive year. He has nowhere near the same amount of targets as Terry McLaurin and Jahan Dawson, yet he's been more productive, but you know why? Terry McLaurin has been one of the most NFL, um, one of the best separating receivers in the NFL right now, one of the highest graded receivers in, in every category all season. He's gotten open on 49% of his snaps against man covers this year, which is the third best amongst NFL wide receivers with at least one just snaps versus man. Right now, Curtis Samuel is the third best receiver at getting open in the NFL right now. You can't say the same about Terry McLaurin or Jahan Dawson. Um, but yeah, man, I completely agree with my boy Commander's Realm. The Terry McLaurin thing is so frustrating, but I'm not going to forget what he did here in the last four seasons. He didn't just suddenly regress this much. His lack of involvement is a clear result of an offense that lacks identity and an ability to do much of anything. So it's a lot of blame to go around. You can blame Eric Beauty. The enemy Terry McLaurin, Sam Howe, the offensive line, other receivers, um, even just Eric Bienemy wise, just route concept wise. We've seen several clips of like Terry McLaurin and another receiver being in the same area. So all it takes is technically one DB to cover him, but of course it's, it's, it's at minimum two DBs, probably three, because why do we have these guys? Right? I mean, even one of Jahan Dotson's touchdowns that Sam Howe threw a couple of weeks ago, I forgot against the exact opponent, but like it was a beautiful throw, beautiful route and everything. But Terry McLaurin is right there, right behind Jahan Dotson. He could have caught it for a touchdown. It's like, what? route concept is this is this eric Benemy's play design bad play calling bad or is it them not running the right routes i don't know i mean you got to be a part of the team to know all that type of stuff you got to be there in the film room to know that type of stuff it's just crazy
also it's crazy how quick to think that people are turning on Terry McLaurin. Um, and I think just as a fan base, uh, he does deserve better. If any, if it, there's any reason to trade him, the fact that people are starting to like be as upset at him as they are, I think do him a favor as well and let him go. Uh, again, I blame Terry McLaurin for quite a bit of this. He deserves quite a bit of the blame pile, but this this season is over with because of Terry McLaurin. Terry McLaurin is no longer a number one receiver. Terry McLaurin is terrible. I don't agree with any of that. Is it his fault that he's having a down year? Um, a lot of it is his fault, but to just say that he's a terrible receiver, um, we're getting out of hand. And so he deserves better because he's been putting up with so much these last, last few years since he's been drafted here. So many quarterbacks, different owners, different offensive coordinators, different, all kinds of stuff, different head coaches. He deserves better, bro. So even though even though Eric Benemy could be a large part of the blame, um, maybe the next regime will come in. Maybe they like him. Maybe they don't. Maybe they feel like, hey, Eric Benemy did everything he could. Terry McLaurin leading the, the team in targets, and he's still not being productive. Maybe, and if we think Sam Howell's the quarterback, we're just going to look at Terry McLaurin like we're just going to blame you. We're going to be the one to throw you under the bus, even if it isn't completely your fault. They just may put it all on him. Um, so if Eric Bieniemy stays, which I don't think is likely at all, if Sam Howell stays, which I think is the most likely, I think Terry McLaurin may end up being traded away or whatever. Um, and first of all, just to get more draft picks for uh, a Josh Harris-led team and Eugene Shin-led team that does that, that looks like they're going the analytics-based route and they're going to do everything they can to get as much draft capital and cap space to first of all make them look like an attractive destination for one of the top head coaches and gms out there and stuff like that but also they just want to have a lot of draft capital just period but yeah man shout out to my mark bullock for bringing this up washington should probably trade terry mcclellan in the offseason he'll be 29 at the start of the next season and the team is looking more and more like it needs a full rebuild god deserves a chance to contend somewhere else so do him like how you did chase young basically and let him go somewhere to not only be happy to not only contend but to be impactful on a contending team that's every nfl player's dream um and to go out there and you know hopefully do well enough to earn that next big contract um, that you know, of course, he'll be 29 years old. He's older than people think because he was older coming out of the draft than people usually are. But I mean, I think he can go somewhere and be impactful. I wish is here. I still hope that it's here. It's just not looking very likely because I think we will go full rebuild, especially if for whatever reason at the end of this season we trade Jonathan Allen and Terry McLaurin or either one. Even if we just trade away one of them, we let a lot, a lot of our 2024 free agents walk. We are in full rebuild mode. I wouldn't be surprised if we cut Charles Leno. We don't even try to trade him. We just cut him. But looking at speaking of 2024 free agents, Curtis Samuel, Kendall Fuller, Jacoby Brissett, our backup quarterback, starting Mike Linebacker and Cody Barton, Cornelius Lucas, our backup swing tackle, who I hope we resign for cheap, but you never know. Jeremy Reeves, all pro special teamer who's been out all season with a serious injury. Um, F.L. Bada, David Bada, Khalid Hudson, Tyler Larson, David Mayo, Antonio Gibson. Um, Joey Sly, our franchise kicker, Jamison Crowder, our, our, our stud and putt returner right now. Hope we bring him back as well, along with Joey Sly and Antonio Gibson. Byron Pringle, he's contributed quite a bit at times. Um, Sadiq Charles was your starting guard before he got hurt. Your starting left guard. You got Brandon Dillon, Cameron Curl. In the offseason, after Josh Harris bought the team, there were reports coming from Ron Rivera and his camp that Cameron Curl was a priority re signing and long term contract guy, but. Ron Rivera is no longer running the show. Martin Mayhew, all of those guys are gone after this offseason. It's over with. We're moving on. So who knows if the next regime prioritizes Cameron Curl at all as well. Because I've said it in several videos and live streams. I love Cameron Curl. I hope we sign him to a long-term contract, but not for big money because he's not an impactful safety. He's the glue of the defense. You can argue he's the most he's the best player, the most important piece to our defense. But he's not a guy out here making plays, getting interceptions, forcing fumbles consistently and stuff like that. So the next regime who doesn't have this attachment to him, they're not the guy, they're not the regime that drafted him in the seventh round and watched him grow up to become who he's who he is now. They're gonna just straight up look at the stats, contract negotiations, and be like, you where's the interceptions? Where's the forced fumbles? Where's the fumble recoveries? Where's the sacks? All that type of stuff. He doesn't do well as far as getting numbers like that. So they're gonna be like yeah we would like to have you we see how important you are to this defense but you don't make plays um so i just i i want to keep cam curl i love cam curl i see the value in cam curl the next regime probably will not more than likely will not um so if he ends up standing in in, in washington it will not be um for the big time money that it sounded like he was potentially going to get this offseason at least that his dad said he was asking for. Then you got James Smith Williams, who's our starting defensive end. Case Tua, who's the starting defensive end on the other side. Um, all of these guys are free agents at the end of this season. And 
like I've said, man, when it comes to new regimes coming in, new GM, new head coach, new all of that, especially new owner and stuff, uh, some of the starters are undeniable. I mean, you may trade away a starter for really good draft capital to make an impact on this team, but like immediately as a new regime, you're trying to come in and get impactful players that you brought in immediately to start. But usually the starters are typically safer other than like free agents, of course, are safer than the backups. The, another regime is not going to value our backups as much as this current regime did. They're going to look at guys like Casey Tuhill and be like, man, we can find a guy that fits our scheme better as a backup than you do as a rotational piece. Even like a Cornelius Lucas. They may, they, I mean, every regime feels like they're smarter than the previous regime. They're going to look and be like, man, we can find a better swing tackle than Cornelius Lucas. Um, all kinds of, we can, we can find a better backup center than a Tyler Larson. And that's so the backups are the guys that are really at most, at, at the biggest risk to going. So the fact that we're even talking about Jonathan Allen and Terry McLaurin, it sounds like everybody's a full go. Nobody is safe. I'm telling y'all that right now. I'm warning you now. Heed my warning, December 4th, 2023, how crazy this is about to get in the offseason. I'm telling you now. By this, by May, this team is going to be flipped upside down. I'm warning you right now. Sam Howell may not even be safe. Speaking of Sam Howell, even just looking at the depth chart, even some guys whose contracts don't end in this after the end of this 2023 season. Logan Thomas may be used for trade bait. Send him to a potential contender as like a cheap tight end that could come in and be somewhat of a dual threat option for you catch most passes thrown his way stuff like that um you even i mean you never know jonathan allen and terry mclaurin on, on on trade block deron Payne may be right with them uh, maybe a team could use a very athletic linebacker in jamin davis uh you, you never know Benjamin say juice could maybe end up gone you just never know man you literally never know this thing could get ugly quick man Right now, the only player I would even think is potentially even kind of safe is Tress Way. And even then, the next regime may be like, yeah, you know, one Pro Bowl, that's cool. We can we can find another punter that does that. But, I mean, I don't see why you would shake it up that bad. But, hey, man, next regime, I'm going to tell you right now, you better come in and replace that long snapper as soon as you can. I'm going to go ahead and get that out of the way right now. But, yeah, man, that's the end of this video. Please get in the comment section. Let me know how you feel about everything discussed in this video. Please stiff on that like button, stiff on the subscription button, stiff on the bell next to that subscription button. Um, of course, support the channel. Uh, again, I, I'm not home right now, but I'm going to do my best to try to get as many videos out there as possible. I'm working on the full breakdown of everything that happened yesterday in that Dolphins game. I'll probably come out with that tomorrow as in Tuesday, December 5th, so stay tuned for that. But I really appreciate y'all, man. Again, the YouTube channel is back in full effect, so y'all can donate through Super Chat. Shout out my boy Ladero, too. My boy Ladero, um, I wasn't even live streaming yesterday, and he donated just like he would, like just as if I was live streaming. Every time we scored a touchdown, that boy Ladero sent the cash out, man. So I really appreciate that, man, for sticking to you. Even when I wasn't live streaming, like I didn't even hold up my end of the bargain, and my boy Ladero still did. I was like, man, that's 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 a real one right there. So shout out my boy Ladero. Shout out to everybody that donates to the cash app and PayPal. Shout out to all of y'all that super chatted me and stuff like that for my birthday that was november 30th really appreciate all y'all man so stay tuned with all the content man i'm gonna catch y'all later i'm out oh yeah it's extremely cold out here before i go to super cold um but this is the view behind me um i didn't i felt like even though it was warmer inside i felt like this view was better um so i just felt like i had to do it to him you know what i'm saying i had to show the view just like when i was in north carolina with the family on vacation I had to show that view the beach view i prefer this though you know beach is cool I, i'm more city so i love this view right here a lot more even though it's ridiculous i'm about to sprint inside right now though but i appreciate y'all i'm gonna catch y'all later i'm out <laughs>